Committee meeting. I'm going to turn my mic off. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Executive Committee meeting for Thursday, February 4th, is now called to order. Augie, would you do the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Aaron, would you call roll, please? Augie Beltran. Present. Linda Clifford. Present. David Diaz. Here. And Ed Lane. Here. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, before we introduce everyone, I'd like to thank those who have uh, come out on this beautiful morning. It's, uh, and I know we're going to get some more weather, but uh, I thank you for coming out. I'd like to introduce, the, um, starting with over my right, Introduce yourself, please. Thank Rick you. Lopes, Chief of Public Affairs. Krista Shields, Counsel for the Board. Yeah. Stacy Ball, CSLB Budget. Laura Zuniga, Chief of Legislation. Dave Diaz, Board Member. Augie Beltran, Board Member. Linda Clifford, bar Board Member. Cindy Christensen, Registrar. David Bow, Chief of Enforcement. Cindy Canamato, Chief Deputy Registrar. Aaron Eckerd, Registrar's Assistant. And I'm Ed Lang, um, Board Chair. And, uh, if anyone voluntarily would like to introduce themselves, you may, but you're not required to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. The use of electronic equipment by board members uh, is the sole purpose for viewing meeting minutes, and you probably won't see them chatting between each other, but they're just to uh, view the minutes. Members of the board who are not members of the committee may attend the committee meeting. However, if a majority of the members of the full board are present, uh, members uh, who are not committee members may attend the meeting only as observers. And I thank you, appreciate you for observing that. Let's go to uh, item agenda B. Okay, and it's concerning uh, public comments. In order to allow the CSOB sufficient time to conduct its scheduled business, public comments may be limited to a reasonable amount of time for each member of the public. I will be limiting comments to five minutes, although I will consider requests by members of the public for additional time to address the board. Please make your comments focused and relevant uh, to the duties of the CSLB. It is not necessary to repeat statements or views of a previous speaker. It is sufficient to state that you agree. The board values input from public as part of its consumer protection uh, mission. It invites and welcomes public comments during this section of the agenda. However, board members cannot engage in dialogue with those who testify during this section of the agenda due to constraints imposed on the CSLB and its members by law. The law prohibits the CSLB from substantially discussing or voting on any matter brought up during public comment. A member of the public who would like the board to discuss a topic not listed on the agenda can ask the board to consider placing the agenda on the board agenda for the future meeting. If you have an application, complaint, or uh, disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint since the board members will be the judges and by law are not permitted to receive evidence of in information that are it is not part of the administrative record in the case. The public may provide general comments during this time for items not on the agenda or if you comment, uh, if your comment is, rel uh, is related to the specific agenda item, you may provide comments as the agenda item comes up for discussion. We will ask the public comment prior to taking action on any item. If we forget to ask the public comment, the public can raise their hand or uh, ask to make a comment after board discussion, and they will be recognized. 
The CLCB cannot take any action on items not listed on the agenda. Are there any individuals that wish to address the board at this time? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item C, budget update. Stacey Paul. Thank you, Ed, and good morning. Um, so we're gonna start on page six. Um, in the first chart, you'll see the budget and expenditures um, through November um, for this fiscal year, 2015-16. Again, usually no big surprises on our expenditures. We're 44% spent of our fiscal year budget. Um, and in fact, Cindy, as well as I and the programs have been really responsible in our purchases and monitoring everything that's going on with our expenditures this year, just to make sure we're fiscally responsible, keep our fund as healthy as, as we can. Um, so then on our second chart is our revenue, and you'll see at the, the bottom line, the overall is 2.9% up um, from the prior year, which is pretty typical. Um, but I do like to point out, so like 76% of our revenue is licenses and renewals, um, and we're 2.1% up from the two-year cycle, which this is a non-peak year. So then we'll go on to the next page, which is our fund condition. Um, this projects out to 1718. Um, you'll see bottom line on the month in reserve, we're at 0.2. So it's severely depleted, and that's less than a month worth of reserve. Um, keep in mind, this always assumes we're not going to expend, we're going to, not, we're going to expend our budgeted authority. However, that never happens. We usually revert about 2.5 million. So if we do continue to revert the funds, that number will go up. But as you can see, we're still gradually losing months in reserve. Um, but we're keeping an eye on that and monitoring our purchases, as, as I said. On the, if you flip the page, the next two pages are our statistics summary. It's pretty much a snapshot in time back to 2012 to present. Um, and it compares the, the stats on a monthly basis. So you can look at your applications received, your licenses renewed. Um, and this is pretty typical, as you can see, kind of looks like we're, we're improving, economy's improving a little bit. And then if you look at the last page, page 10, that's our CSLB position vacancies. This compares how many vacancies we have at this moment in time to compared to last year, and it's pretty much the same at 35 vacancies. So that's it for the budget update if there's any questions. Any committee members have any comments? Yes. Um, so I am concerned, obviously. It doesn't take very long to get where we don't even have a month of reserves now. Right. I understand that it makes the assumption we spend all of our reserves, but right now, I mean, we spend our budget, but right now we're spending more than our budget and have been uh, for a while. We're on this slide. Right. So um, there was a discussion at one time to increase um, fees, and um, that didn't go very far because there wasn't a lot of um, supporting data mm -hmm. behind it for you know why we might pick a certain amount or whatever. But it seems like this is the year we should do that, and um, and we should do this sooner rather than later. So is there an intent, uh, you know, on, on staff's part to, you know, really delve into that and then come back to the board with a um, <coughs> possible suggested increase? Um, oh, Linda, mm -hmm. I, we are doing, uh, we are going to be doing legislation to go in for a fee increase this okay. year. Right. We're, I think we're still looking for an offer though, right, Laura? Yes, we are. Yeah, but the board approved it at the December board meeting. Any other, any other comments from the committee? Okay, any comments from the public? Okay. Thank 
you for presentation of the budget. Let's go to uh, item D. And this is concerning the review, discussion, and possible approval of the 2016 and 18 strategic planning process. Uh, Sandy Kanamoto. Good morning. Thank you, Ed. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see on page 12 is the process is outlined. We are working with SOLID from DCA to facilitate our strategic planning process, which will be held in March. And so far, you have been contacted regarding interviews, and we have sent out surveys to stakeholders. Um, we were quite impressed yesterday. The survey went out, and within minutes, we had 63 responses reported from SOLID. Um, so we are following this process that's outlined here on this page and looking forward to meeting with everyone to get everybody's input and hear the results of the survey um, that has been conducted. It went out to, the survey went out to over 6,000 stakeholders. Any questions from the committee? Any questions from the public? Okay. Thank you. Next item of ag agenda would be item E, and that's review discussions, possible recommendation for board approval of CSLB board member administrative procedure manual. And I know this is a uh, uh, review that uh, the committee would be interested in and thank Erin for putting her um, time and energy and professional work into this. So Erin, would you proceed please? Thank you, Ed. Good morning all. Um, we're gonna go over some changes that we made to the CSLB board member administrative and procedures manual last updated in 2014. Um, <coughs> to identify proposed updates, staff reviewed manuals from other boards, um, as well as the material that we all received in October from legal counsel's training. There was a few grammatical changes that were made throughout, um, but as we go through the book, you'll see that additions were made in underlines and deletions were shown uh, via strike through. Um, so we'll start with chapter one, which begins on page 22 in our book. Um, in the overview, we decided to add the mission, vision, and values, um, especially important for new board members as they go throughout this packet to keep this in mind as we view everything for the board. Um, in chapter two, on page 24, we added uh, information on the bagley Keene Open Meeting Act for the information that was provided, again, with legal counsel back in October's training. Still in the same chapter, page 24, we added a section on location. We wanted to make a special note um, that all of our board meeting locations are in compliance with uh, the American with Disabilities Act. Um, you'll see that we struck through the public attendance at board meetings. Um, actually, this was just moved uh, to later in the, the manual for improved flow. Um, then in our summary, you'll see um, a quorum a reference to the business and professions code was added. That actually should have been added under agenda items, so that will be updated in our summary at our board meeting in March. And then moving along to voting on motions. Still on chapter two, page 25, um, we just described the voting options now um, due to the Bagley Keene Meeting Act, which changed on January 1st of 2015. Uh, we have to record um, each board member's vote and show them in our minutes. Uh, still in chapter two, there was lots of changes in chapter two. Uh, we added a section on closed session. This just defines and clarifies how and when closed sessions can be held during board meetings. And that was on page 27 following along and then on page 28 we added the other types of board meetings this came um, also was introduced at our October training with legal counsel 
um, and it just goes over teleconference meetings, special meetings, and emergency meetings when those are applicable. Do I have any questions so far? <sighs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so chapter three starts on page 29. Um, we added our standing committees. It's just a list to show um, what the board is uh, comprised of. And then it also lists the duties of the committee chairperson. Um, also, moving along, committee appointments. Um, we added language to explain the selection process for committee members and to define the term of service. We also deleted language regarding consultation with the vice chair and secretary. And then moving along to page 30. Hey, hey Aaron, if I yep. could um, just kind of add a little bit information sure. about that one. Uh, it has not been it has not been done since I've been with the board where the board chair would conduct with the vice chair and secretary. And the reason for that is it would probably violate the Bagley Keene Act if they did discuss it with them outside a meeting. And to hold a committee meeting to do committee appointments probably isn't the best use of everybody's time. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Thank you, Cindy. Um, also in the quorum, the committee meetings quorum, which is on page 30, um, we added this section to define the quorum um, and the maximum number of board members on a committee uh, to have more than seven would constitute a quorum of the full board. Any questions? Um, chapter four, uh, there wasn't really any changes. We just took the wor uh, word of committees off of the chapter title. Chapter five, travel and salary policies and procedures. Uh, this was formerly chapter three in the book. And we begin this section just with a few updates on page 32. Under travel arrangements, um, we just would like uh, to offer a registrar's executive assistant um, to help you guys make your travel arrangements. We've started using a new system called Concur. Um, all of our reservations have to be made through this new online reservation system if you're seeking reimbursement from the state. And then uh, we added lodging um, just to show that we use room blocks for the board meetings. That was on page 32. And then travel reimbursements, just some updated information on what to submit and how to submit for travel reimbursement. Um, and then I'll, the registrar's assistant will uh, put the claims in for you guys and keep you notified of the process. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> um, chapter six was just moved from chapter five. Minimal changes there. Um, except for on page 34, we want to note that strategic planning is now a biennial process. It is not done every year. Um, in legislation, we had a couple of updates um, that the committee chair is now consulted instead of the board chair. And then in the registrar evaluation, we just added more specific information um, to help you guys understand the process, especially since we'll be going over that this year. Do I have any questions? You guys are easy, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, um, in chapter seven, representations on behalf of the CSLB, it's on page 36. Um, just one quick change, and that is um, the business cards. In the past, um, board members were able to request that they use their own business or personal information on CSLB. Um, business cards and that is a conflict of interest law and we are no longer able to offer that to you guys. Okay, in chapter eight, um, most of this was composed in ch chapter six before. Um, we begin on page 37 in our book. We added an introductory paragraph um, to let you know that the registrar's executive assistant will maintain all of the training records for you all. Um, we also added board member orientation training. This is something that has to be done at every appointment and now reappointment. That was new. 
And then we also added the defensive driver's training. Um, this is something that has to be done within six months of appointment and then every four years afterwards. Uh, moving along to chapter nine, which begins on page 38, other policies and procedures. We added some language on financial disclosure, which is under the conflict of interest forms we have to fill out every year. Um, this just explains requirements related to the mandatory filing of our board members for financial disclosure statements. And then to wrap it up here, we added a few uh, acronyms to our abbreviations and acronyms glossary because of text change. In the manual, we added the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act, Americans with Disabilities Act, Defensive Drivers Training, and the Department of General Services. And then one last change we made, which is no longer in here, we removed Appendix A from the 2014 manual. This was the DCA Incompatible Work Activities Policy and Procedures Memo. Uh, this is now included in the welcome binders you receive at new appointment and felt that it was redundant. Do we have any questions? Okay, back to you, Ed. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Any questions from the committee? Okay. <laughs> That's very good. Any any comment from the public? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Uh, yes, I need a uh, motion. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to adopt said recommendations on a procedures manual that was so eloquently explained to us <laughs> by the executive assistant to the registrar. Second. <laughs> I'll be in there. Thank you. It's been uh, popped and moved and second. Uh, Aaron, would you call roll, please? This is the easy part. <laughs> Augie Beltran? Yes. Linda Clifford? Aye. David Diaz? Yes. Ed Lang? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. Motion passed that... Uh, we will pass on the recommendation for board approval. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, motion to adjourn. Yes, Ms. Clay. So moved. Okay. And uh, any yes. discussion from the committee? Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give it a second on that. Sorry. Did you say motion to adjourn? Yeah. Yes, and I said so moved. Holy cow, already? <laughs> 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 you can say I no. was just getting into this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're in the 14 now. <laughs> well, we have, we have the room for another hour. If you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any comments from the public? Okay, here and seeing none. Motion carried that this meeting be adjourned. Thank you.